Welcome to our Summer Strand United Church Sunday service. We're so glad that you've joined us today and we hope you'll enjoy the service with us. As you see, and welcome all to the service today. Um, I put the heart here as well, as we know it's Valentine's Day and I uh, wish all our loved ones a very happy day. Um, if you didn't get a note, read 1 John 4. Uh, for probably the nicest love letter you will receive. Uh, the reading this morning, though, is from Psalm 34, verses 4 to 7. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him from all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promise over our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of worshipping today. And we pray you will open our hearts and our minds to your word and the service this morning. Please be with those less fortunate and those facing times of despair and sadness. Thank you, Lord, that we can lay all our, all our troubles at your feet and rest in your abundant love. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you very much. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy 
My name is Parti Emmanuel and I participated in the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. I murdered many Tutsi under the order of bad leadership and have spent six years in prison and four years in community service. While in prison, fellow prisoners invited me to try Alpha. I went, but struggled to engage. I realized I needed to tell the truth about what I had done and wrote a letter asking for forgiveness of the relatives of those I had murdered. Life was so hard after being released from prison. I found my wife with two children that were not mine and I faced many heartbreaking situations. I didn't know how I was going to live with the genocide survivors after what I had done. My heart was filled with agony, loneliness and fear. Encouraged by Alpha in prison, I decided to do Alpha again. I learned that Jesus forgives and experienced love in a way I had never known before. With the help of a local pastor, I went to find Vincent, whose mother and grandmother I had killed, to ask for forgiveness. I now live in a village built for genocide survivors and perpetrators. Vincent lives in the same village. We have formed a friendship and I now experience peace like I haven't experienced it before. Day-to-day -day life continues to be a challenge, but I have found forgiveness and healing for the things that I have done. God questions about life? Try Alpha. The title of the sermon today is What is God's Master Plan for Breaking Down Barriers? First reading is from Genesis chapter 4. Adam lay with his wife Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. The New Testament reading from the book of Ephesians, where our series is, beginning at chapter 2, verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly, you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, remember that at the time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of promise. Without hope, without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the power of your word for the clarity it brings to our hearts and our souls and our minds. We thank you that today is the day that you have made, that we can gather through the presence of your Holy Spirit, through the power and love and the work of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give us clarity of heart and mind and soul. Holy Spirit, that you would work deeply in our hearts so that we too may follow Jesus. We may hear his voice to us today. We ask this in your holy name. 
Amen. Quoting first from an article from Psychology Today, written by Aaron Leiber, titled, When Anger from Coronavirus is Displaced. A prominent defense mechanism may be at play while we grieve normalcy and more. She says, Due to the vast losses associated with coronavirus, many people are experiencing sadness, fear, anxiety, loneliness, as well as anger. People may be feeling anger about deep losses related to jobs, finances, normalcy, routines, cherished activities, the health of self or loved ones, or the ability to see friends and family. A common way people protect themselves from unpleasant feelings such as anger is by engaging in defense mechanisms. Displacement is a defense mechanism in which people transfer emotions from the original source to another person or situation. Because defense mechanisms are subconscious, people don't often realize they're taking anger from one situation and blasting it into another. It is into the reality of this context that is happening in your life and mine and in the society around us, that this message comes to us from the book of Ephesians. So we are building another layer of reinforced concrete into those spiritual columns so that we can make our stand, as Ephesians 6 says, 6 says against the evil powers of this dark world. And of course, this dark world loves to exploit anger. Satan loves to exploit the anger in us, creating walls of division in us and around us. So we believe this is the, the strategic purpose of Ephesians, to help us uncover and understand so that we can make our stand against even evil. So the question about the theme for today's message then is very clearly this. So to improve our stand against evil, uh, the hostile enemy, Satan and his strategy, we must first confront the hostility in ourselves, within us, and between us and God, and then between us and the people around us, uh, so that we can make this stand finally against evil. So just how bad was this division that our text speaks about between the Jews and the Gentiles back in the days of Jesus? Well, William Barclay says this, the Jew had an immense contempt for the Gentile. The Gentile said the Jews were created by God to be fuel for the fires of hell. God, they said, loves only Israel. Of all the nations he has made, it was not lawful to assist a Gentile mother at birth, because this would simply be to bring another Gentile into the world. The barrier between Jew and Gentile was absolute. If a Jewish boy or a girl married a Gentile, the funeral of that Jewish child was carried out. Such contact with a Gentile was the equivalent of death. So at the heart of the passage today is this amazing truth that these two heavyweight antagonists, like these two heavyweight boxes in the ring, the Jew and the Gentile, uh, have the potential of becoming close friends. Um, and we ask ourselves, I mean, how is this even possible? Possible? Is it possible to really break down hostile long-term barriers? You might be asking that question. According to the Alpha Testimony, that lovely testimony of Parti Emmanuel's story, who participated in the 1994 genocide among the Tutsi, he said himself he murdered many people. Spent there were consequences to his actions. Spent six years in prison and then four years in community service. He said he has this daily struggle, the agony of heart, the loneliness, the fear of living life now with what he has done. What was the way forward? He said the key was truth telling, uh, confronting the consequences of his actions, writing those letters, speaking to people. Uh, he found forgiveness, uh, love, and hope in a relationship with Jesus Christ. In Ephesians, that would be in him. In him, it's possible for hostile antagonists to become close friends. So now as we look closely 
at the text, verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth. So in this journey towards reconciliation, the text is divided neatly into three parts. By the way, each part starts. We have a therefore. Uh, therefore, remember. And in verse 12, again, remember that at that time. So beginning the journey towards reconciliation, this tough, hard journey, we say, you know, where can we begin when it is so complicated i mean that alpha story how complicated was that story where to begin you might be saying when you're seeking reconciliation well the text says we begin the journey by remembering remember verse 11 remember verse 12 remember what well remember the list of terrible attributes of aliens of being an alien of being somebody who was Far from Christ. That's what the text says. That's how we begin. We remember how desperate our situation, our circumstances were. Let's have a look at the attributes of being aliens. We were outside and we were excluded. We were in the outside group. Gentiles were called by the, the pious Jews were called uh, uncircumcised heathens. It's interesting. The text doesn't focus on that labeling at all. It's as if it, it says, you know, shrug off the labeling, the stereotypes that are put on us that cause division. It doesn't focus on that at all. It goes on to say, just realize that how far you were from God, you lived apart from God. That's the Gentiles. That's us when we were unsaved. That's the desperateness of our situation. We were without spiritual blessings from chapter 1. We were without light from chapter 1. We were without peace, without rest, without safety, without hope, without a prophet, a priest, and a king. We were excluded from citizenship. We had no knowledge of the covenant promises of God. We lived without God and therefore we were without hope. Why remember? How does this help us in the journey of reconciliation? Well, it levels the playing field. Paul is saying, you pious Jews, that's what you were like. You lowly Gentiles, that's what you were like. You're antagonists, hostile towards each other. Well, remember what you were like. Levels the playing field. The Bible tells us to forget certain things like the injuries, the harm, the hostility, the hurt others have caused us. It tells us to forget that because that's what God does for us with our sin. And it tells us to remember how desperate our situation was when we were aliens. Uh, without knowledge, we were unsaved how far we were. Deprived alien tells us to remember and then only then can we appreciate what God has done for us. Only then can we begin the journey towards reconciliation. If we don't, then we face the same realities that happened here in ancient Israel. We become pious and proud and we look down on others. That's what they did towards the Gentiles and there's no opportunity of reconciliation. We believe that only we are special. We can hold on to our hurt. It's justified. And therefore, there's no need to reach out. Uh, 1961, what was the wall that went up? You remember it, the Berlin Wall. And East Germany, having lost 2.5 million people to the exodus that were moving west, um, desperate to stop the ex exodus, to keep its citizens, East Germany decided to build a wall to prevent them from crossing the border. The wall was heavily guarded. Around 100 people were killed trying to cross over and many more were seriously wounded by trying to cross that wall. So human beings are so good at building walls. Jew and Gentile, hundreds, hundreds of years of hostility, east and west, the bamboo curtain. But what about those psychological walls we build, those spiritual walls between churches, those emotional walls. What about those controlling walls like between East and West Germany? We're so good at building those. We move on in the text, verse 13. But now, here's the good news, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now, there it is again, you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. What's the second step in this process of reconciliation? 
we ask the question, how can it be achieved when, 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 the, when the climate is so hostile? When the antagonists in, in, in the ring are throwing those punches? Well, we do it not only by remembering how desperate and far we were from God, which levels that playing field, but we do it by receiving, by receiving the gift of what Jesus has done for all parties. The, 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 you know, those who are against us, um, because they are now believers as well. And uh, this could be in your family, this could be in your church, this could be absolutely anywhere in life. This is between believers. And um, we receive what Jesus has done. Repro surprisingly, he has blessed the alien and he has blessed um, the pious Jew with his love. And how has Jesus done this? Well, he has built a bridge. He has brought us near to God. Friends, can you say amen to that with me? And it is this bridge of Christ that helps us to walk towards one another in the middle of the hostility. Not only has Jesus built a bridge, but he's broken down a wall and he's united the Jew and the Gentile. You see, the joy of the text, the hope in the text, friends, is this, that if God can unite Jew and Gentile after hundreds of of years of hostility. How much more can he do for you and I? That's why it's such a hopeful passage. Jesus gave us a new peace, a deeply personal peace. The peacemaking Jesus laid down his life for us. So these two heavyweight antagonists, the Jew and the Gentile, have the potential of becoming close friends. Now, literally in the temple, there was a dividing wall. Um, the outer court of the Gentile, the courts of the woman. There was a physical wall separating the Jews and the Gentile. The, 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 the Gentile could have a look at a distance at the beautiful temple, but could never enter. It was a standing symbol of separation, a magnificent temple built by uh, Herod the Great. And the outer court of the Gentile was separated by the, by the inner court from the inner court by a boundary wall of sort of a one and a half meter pile of, of stone. And, and, and the signs at intervals were on it in Greek and Latin saying no trespassers will, uh, not, not, only, not, not just trespassers will be prosecuted, but trespassers will be executed. So if we were in Istanbul today in the museum, um, one of the two, these signs have actually been found and we could go and have a, have a look at one of them. Um, and we'd find a limestone slab about a meter wide saying this, no foreigner may enter within the barrier and enclosure around the temple. Anyone caught doing so will have himself to blame for his ensuing death. It literally existed, friends. So um, David Guzak, he, he goes on to say, the wall of separation is gone because the common lordship is greater than the previous division. That's our hope as believers. If the Lordship of Jesus Christ is not greater than any difference you have with others, be it political, racial, economic, language, geography, or whatever, then you have not fully understood what it means to be under the Lordship of Jesus, says Guzek. So it's so popular for us today to ask all these questions of God. But sometimes God, often in fact, God asks us questions. That's exactly what he did to Adam and Eve in the garden. And, you know, chapter 1 and 2, 3 in Genesis. And now in chapter 4, we've got God asking us a question again. What well, he asks it of, of Cain and Abel, and he's asking it, I believe, of us today. Verse 6, Genesis 4. Why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will, you will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. Hostility in families, in the journey of God with his people, hostility uh, between God and other nations, Hostility uh, between leaders and their followers. Hostility in the church, as you look at the New Testament, is as ancient as the Garden of Eden, friends. Right here in the story of Cain and Abel, we have an opportunity of Cain 
to choose differently. That's why God asks him the question. You and I have the opportunity not to displace anger and put it onto others. We have the opportunity to look at the hostility in ourselves. And the hostility perhaps we even have carried over to God and to others in our past. And we have the opportunity to speak differently. Cain could have changed his ways. And so um, we perhaps don't have this loud voice speaking to us, but we do have the Holy Spirit convicting us and gently prompting us to approach, to love, to forgive, to do what Jesus is asking us to do. Back into the text, verse 15. He did this by ending the system of the law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. You see, the Jews felt that the Gentiles were inferior because they did not follow all the rules of the law. And the Gentiles felt the Jews were a strange lot with all these rules and regulations. So the third factor, which the text is so clear about with this consequently that follows in the last part of the passage we were read just now. We, you know, we ask this question in reconciliation. How is it sustained over the long haul when it seems so fragile? Well, the answer is in the text. Something came to an end. The nitpicking of the legalistic approach of uh, the Jews about all their laws and regulations. It came to an end. Um, you know, for the Jew and the Gentile and us to be reconciled to God and one another, Jesus was separated. He was pushed away from the Father's love. He gave us his rights in heaven, the power and the privilege to become one with us so that we may find peace with God and with each other. And so what Jesus gave up, we are now, because he gave up, we are able to find that peace. He gave up all those rights. And so often in a conflict, in hostility, somebody has to be mature enough to give up their rights. Their rights to have the last say. Their rights to stay angry. Their rights of privilege and power. Their rights of age. Their rights of culture. Their rights of race. We have to be Jesus in a situation. Not only did something come to an end, but something new was born. These two hostile groups became a new group. And today that is called the Church of Jesus Christ. Amen, friends. Verse 17, he brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles, or to us unsaved, who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Would you like to say amen to that, friends? Both groups have been brought near to God, and therefore to one another by Jesus. Sometimes we feel that our situations are beyond the reach of Christ. Personal inner hostility, hostility between us and God, you know, um, family hostility, friendship hostility, church hostility, work hostility, racial hostility, national hostility, South African hostility. But not according to this text, friend. The hope of this passage is that if hundreds of years of hostility between Jew and Gentile, if Christ can make a way, if he can break down the barrier, if he can literally break down that physical wall and say, come to me. You know, you were far, you were far, that group was far, but in Christ you are believers. And now there's a new way in him. Then nothing is untouchable. Reconciliation is possible when we remember, when we receive from Christ. And look at the, the final part of this magnificent passage, friends. Verse 19, consequently, it's finally when we live it out in the church. When we live it out in our homes, we can't just remember and receive. We have to live it out. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, you see here, this is the reinforcing of this concrete we're building layer upon layer so that we can make our stand against the evil one. And unity 
is critical to making our stand. Turning down the temperature of hostility is key to making our stand. Satan loves to exploit anger. Uh, um, and let's be honest, friend, it's not just anger that sometimes displaces itself and pushes it into another situation. Sometimes we internalize the anger. We become depressed and lonely. And that too causes division and, and struggle in homes and relationships. So consequently, you are no longer foreigners but fellow citizens. Built, verse 20, built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as, a, as the chief cornerstone. Verse 21, in him, the whole building, this is now us together, is, is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you, that is you, you listening to this today, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. See, friends, by the power of the spirit, we can do things differently. We can put years of antagonism and hostility and hurt and disappointment. We can choose to, to let the love of Christ fill our hearts uh, like it did in that Alpha story. We can break down physical walls like the, like the, like the, uh, the Berlin Wall. We can break down social walls. Um, you know, walls of hostility, of race and color, ethnicity and divide and hostility, even in our own nation, even in our homes, even in our marriages. So we lay down our rights as Christ did. We can choose just to displace our anger and bring it in hot and heavy into a situation. Or we can um, choose love. Even as we approach the table of grace today, this beautiful example of the Lord Jesus' love, the text is here, it's by his blood. Is Jesus saying to you today, remember what a desperate alien you were? Or remember what a pious, self-righteous person you were? Or receive today afresh the beautiful gift of re reconciliation in Christ. Be reconciled to Christ Jesus first. So that you may be reconciled to your neighbor, to your child, to your spouse. We can choose just to build more barriers, friends. Or in Jesus, we can choose to break them down. And so as we approach the Lord's table today. At this beautiful table of God's grace. This beautiful table of reconciliation where God has united himself with us given us a hope of being united with others bringing peace into hostility all are welcome all are welcome who love and know the Lord Jesus Christ and friends today if you have not yet received the love of Jesus if you have not opened up your heart to him then please come to this table and open up your heart to Christ and you too are most welcome. Listen now to the words of Paul telling us how this supper began. For I received from the Lord what I also have passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying this is the cup in the new covenant, in my blood, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, of Jesus. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so now, friends, let us do as Jesus did, recognizing that we belong to his body and humbly recalling the sacrifice that he made for us. And so I... Take this bread and this cup, this wine, and set it apart from its ordinary use in our homes to this magnificent mystery of becoming one with Christ. The one who loves us more than we will ever know. The one who is slow to anger, quick to forgive. The one who loves us with an eternal love. Let us pray. So, Father, we give you thanks for 
powerful work of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for going to the cross on our behalf, for absorbing all the agony and the strife that came to you on our behalf and for reconciling us with the Father. Thank you for laying down your life for us, Lord Jesus. We can only worship you. We can only honor you. We can only praise you for all that you have done. Holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon us and these your gifts to us and make us share in the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For without you, Jesus, we are lost. Without you, Jesus, we remain hostile to God. We are enemies of God and we are hostile in our relationships. So we pray for the peace of Christ that comes to us and the sacrament of Holy Communion. Father, we belong to you. Father, we offer ourselves to you. Make us one in your love and ask of us whatever you will. And so, friends, we sing together that magnificent prayer. Jesus taught his disciples to pray and to live. Let's sing and pray together from our hearts. Let's consider Jesus at the cross, friends, and what he endured on our behalf. Matthew 27. When the governing soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him, they stripped him <clears throat> and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spat on him. And they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After that, they mocked him and they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to crucify him. This is how much he loves us, friends. This is, is the God of heaven giving up his rights of power and privilege and becoming one with us so that we may be reconciled to him. That you may be reconciled to yourself. That you would learn to love this person Jesus has created. And that we would be reconciled to one another. And lay down our rights and privileges and love as Jesus loves.
And so, friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Of course, this broken bread represents his broken body for us, friends. And so, too, the same way he took the cup and said, This is the new covenant, which is poured out in my blood. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, we are proclaiming the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the soon returning King. So Father, we pray that as we eat and as we drink together now, that your spirit would come upon us, that we would receive your forgiveness and your grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so friends, break of the bread and feed one another that we may receive the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we're so aware of your broken body, that your brokenness is our peace, your brokenness is our reconciliation. You have broken down every dividing wall that separates us from God, that separates us from one another. In Christ, we have a new beginning, a new hope. And our friends, the cup, won't you pass the cup to one another, that we may drink of the healing hope that is found only in Christ. It is only by receiving that we're able to give. It's only by remembering that the playing field is level. It's only by living out this gospel that the world is changed, that our families are transformed, that our relationships are healed, that the divides in our nation are healed. Isn't it fascinating, friends, that the hope of our country is Jesus Christ? The hope of salvation is found in the church of Jesus, you, the living body. Let's drink of the cup reconciliation and healing. So Lord Jesus, as we drink of your healing hope, of your love poured out for us, we pray now you would help us to live this hope, to live this gospel. So now friends, I encourage you to uh, pass the peace to one another in your homes. Um, pass the peace if you're uh, ha happy to do that uh, in, in the love of Christ. The reconciliation as we give one another the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you, friends, as you live this gospel in the week ahead. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, SUC family. What a privilege it's been to gather around God's Word again today. We are so thankful for our very special SUC community. It's been such a blessing to witness the kindness and generosity of our church family. Our faithful commitment to monthly tithing ensures that our ministry, worship and outreach continues. If you need more information, feel free to go to our website www.summerstrandunited.co.za